First, thanks for joining us. I'm Ebony Monet. New tonight, the Trump administration moves to strike down an agreement that limits how long migrant children can be detained. Homeland Security has announced a plan to hold undocumented families indefinitely. KPBS reporter Max Rivlin Nadler is live in El Cajon. KPBS reporter Matt Hoffman is live with more on this heightened safety plan. Matt? Now let's head out to Allison St. John in Del Mar with the Mike Levin campaign. Allison. Yes, Lebanese. Thanks, Andrew. Now to more results. In the race for the 76th State Assembly District, two Democrats are competing for the open seat. Lastly, President Trump is stumping for some GOP candidates, including Ted Cruz. How is that working for the Republicans' overall campaign strategy? So far, it's really hard. Here, Ebony. Drew, here behind me, you can see Metro Police still has a large presence as they continue to investigate this homicide here on Oxford Street. They were called here just after 9 tonight. The body was found right around here near this retention pond, and now police are telling us that this victim was likely shot and sustained an injury to his neck. Drew, police tell us they were notified about the attempted robbery by people in the area who actually saw the three men going behind this building to put on masks. Doctors here at Eskenazi are treating this man, and tonight we spoke to his daughter and his neighbors who tell us they're scared, including the family of the man pictured here, who was also hospitalized after a violent assault. Lottie Grondel describes herself as a hardcore gamer. I do spend quite a few of my of my waking hours in front, either in front of a PC or in front of a console. Like kids before her, the 90s baby was first turned on to video games by the Super Mario Brothers. The evolution of gaming now lets her indulge anywhere with Wi-Fi, including the KPBS newsroom. So he's my support. Um, because I am a pretty weak character whose main job is just to do it, um, to do a lot of damage really fast. Grondel is playing Jinx in the hugely popular game League of Legends. An estimated 27 million people play this game every day. I think we should prioritize you a little bit more. Anna Nguyen is another League of Legends player, though admittedly less vocal. When I play a game, and usually if there's like voice chat or something like that, I don't want it made known that I'm a female. That's Rondel and Nguyen don't know each other. They're two San Diego professionals who dedicate hours to the gaming culture. And they both find being a woman gamer comes with added challenges. When somebody brings up a video game and you engage in conversation, the male never has to prove himself as worthy of joining the conversation, but usually everybody stops the conversation, turns to me, and kind of quizzes me. Nguyen says the taunts and negative comments have completely turned her off from group chatting. People say really toxic things online just because there's a screen and you, you don't have to deal with people face to face. Nguyen thinks these characters will ultimately help change how women are perceived in gaming. More recently, I feel like there's more of an incorporation of like stronger women, not, you know, large chested women. The women gamers also agree. For them, the joys of gaming outweigh the negative aspects. Grondo says there's no better way to decompress, escape, and kick butt. A lot of people say get a life. Well, sure, but I'm a gamer. I have lots of lives. <laughs> Linda Pennington knows the city's canyons better than most. As a community organizer with San Diego Canyonlands, she's been part of the fight to preserve the natural habitat for nearly 40 years. Isn't that gorgeous? Yeah. Early Thursday morning, she ventured through Hollywood Canyon and City Heights looking for homeless camps. This is all homeless, um, left behind by homeless. Pennington was joined by a small group of volunteers. We, we often clean this up ourselves too. In all, about 40 people searched City Heights Canyon. Nothing, nothing up here. They also checked alleyways and parks to find people living outside. It's important to get up and do something. If nothing else, count them or identify them as someone in need of resources. Within minutes, they spotted a man sleeping outside in Hollywood Park. Good morning. Can we interview you? All right. The goal is to get a head count. Can you tell me how many people, one or two? Are you alone? Volunteers also ask survey questions, including whether the person being counted has ever been in foster care. The findings were then inputted into an app. 
I would say 25 to yeah, 25 to 34. We're just guessing at this point. Earl Shannon was one of a handful of people willing to share his story with Pennington's group. I feel like we need more opportunities, like, you know, because a lot of us, I mean, we have, we made mistakes in the past and we want to change. Advocates say the point in time count will ultimately help people like Shannon by determining how HUD dollars are allocated to address homelessness. Pennington says getting people sheltered and out of San Diego's canyons is good for them and the environment. So it's very important for the safety of San Diego because of the fires, number one, because of the needles, unfortunately, uh, because of the feces that goes into the open toilets and out to the storm drain, to the ocean, uh, and the horrific trash. Ebony Monet, KPBS News. The Friday before Christmas, Miguel Cortez waits with a bright yellow bin to retrieve incoming donations. Good morning. Good morning. Christmas trees for you to put out. Oh, great, great. Somebody's yeah, somebody's we need them. Need these. these artificial pines are in high demand at Goodwill San Diego's Chula Vista location. But communications director Darlene Casio says some things are unsellable. You know, I, I recently saw a barbecue that was missing a leg that was heavily used that absolutely could not be sold at our outlet. A new book by author Adam Minter spotlights American consumerism. He writes that within the last 50 years, the amount of things Americans bought rose almost 20-fold. And when people tire of these things, most end up in the trash. Only about 3% of these discarded items make their way to resell markets such as Goodwill. Minter goes on to say that Goodwill and other secondhand stores only sell about a third of their items. Not true. It, we really do. We really are good stewards of every donation. And the great thing about giving all of your donated items a second life is that other people can put them to good use. Last year, worldwide, the organization says its sales kept 87 million pounds of goods from landfills, such as this wooden table Cortez loads into an SUV. Okay, here's your receipt. Okay, thank you. Have a nice day. Ebony Monet, KPBS News.